These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. My name is Donalda Jones. I'm the mother of three. For my paid work, I am a, in private practice as a counselor. I'm the founder of the Realm Foundation, and Realm is a nonprofit charitable foundation that supports people with high physical disabilities and their families. I have developed networks of support. The seed for the Realm Foundation was planted when my son Stephen was diagnosed with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. You know, I look at this picture of him when he was just having his third birthday and he really was just such an angelic kid. Stephen's dad, Dale, and I wanted Stephen to be included in society. So a network of support was developed. When Stephen died, I promised to carry on this work as a promise to my son. My name is Verna Mang. Donalda and I met when Donalda was just pregnant with Daniel. Stephen's older brother. So we've known each other for a long time. When Dale and Donalda got the diagnosis for Stephen, it was a huge change. In one way, it was devastating, and another way, it was relief because they knew what, what it was, because they knew something was wrong. Before that, I had some concerns, but they were always waved off. He walked late and the doctor just, you know, gave me suggestions and then he walked. And it was just one thing after another. When Dale took them into the, just for their appointment, the doctor took one look at Stephen and said, I want to test him for muscle disease. I was a social worker at the hospital then, and I was looking through the medical journals and I came across a picture of a boy that looked exactly like Stephen exactly like Stephen, his posture, everything. It was like a neon lights. Person will weaken, use a wheelchair, and will die in their late teens or early 20s. I can handle the rest. I couldn't handle that. I was so fear-driven and afraid. I would wake up crying, I would go to sleep crying. I'm sure I was crying in my sleep. And my concerns were, he wasn't going to be safe, that he wasn't going to be safe at school, that he wouldn't have friends. Well, I made the commitment right there that I was going to cure muscular dystrophy. I turned myself inside out, wanting Stephen to have everything. And I was going to do everything. I mean, I didn't ask for help. I, I, I kind of lost myself. My whole identity became about being Stephen's mother. I was so terrified of Stephen going into a wheelchair. Stephen wore long leg braces, he had his heel cords cut, he was on a drug study. Like, we wanted to give him every opportunity. Stephen was nine years old when he went into the electric wheelchair full time. I remember how happy he was to have independence. He could go walk around the block, he could go in and out of his room. Like, it was complete freedom for him. Through school, the one thing that was very tiring is that Stephen didn't get invited to things or people would say, you know, we, our house isn't accessible or we don't know what to do. Friends would always come to our house because Stephen was never invited. He would um, actually stay in in the winter at recess, so he'd even be more isolated. And when there was a camping trip or something that the school was going to do as a group, the staff would say, Stephen doesn't want to go. And I look back now and I'm thinking about really what needed to be said. Unless there's a reason that Stephen can't go, he's coming. Like it should have just been the expectation should have been, what does Stephen need to come? He had, I guess, as typical experience as he could, considering he didn't have a lot of friends. His brother was in the, in the same high school for one year, and I know for his brother it was really hard um, watching Stephen be alone. And all the big stuff I thought mattered. It didn't. It just didn't. I had always told Stephen, 
You will never have to leave home if you don't want to. You'll never have to leave home. And we were so exhausted. Dale's physical health was waning. Mine was waning. And it's like I had to take back those words because he did have to go live somewhere else. I needed support and Verna was always there. The network really started off as helping Donalda help Stephen move forward. So she decided that she wanted to create one for Stephen. And in reality, it was Donalda that needed the network. She suffered from depression. She was often very angry. She was angry a lot at the healthcare system. As a mom, it's hard to watch your son go through a difficult operation. But the network really, really solidified when Stephen was ventilated. He was so vulnerable. I mean, he could only speak in a whisper and we were terrified his voice wasn't coming back. We were in that room for a long time, a long, long time. So people needed to be there with him to speak on his behalf because the staff couldn't figure out what he was saying. The network really took shape because people started volunteering to come in and take a shift and sit with Stephen. It's funny how you can find yourself smiling, smiling at the, in these pictures when it's such a hard time, hey? We let people in and we saw people were showing up for us and Verna was one of those people. I really got to know Stephen a lot better sitting beside his hospital bed, talking a bit with him, got to know him better. I wondered how to keep my son involved in society. I researched and found organizations that develop support networks for people with high cognitive disabilities. It made sense to me to adapt this concept for people with high physical disabilities. So I formed Realm and Stephen became the first center. The center is the person with high physical disability or their family member. Realm works with the center to hire a facilitator Together, the facilitator and the center invite people to create the network. Under the direction of the center, the facilitator takes the lead to keep the network on track. You know, the whole purpose of this network is to free up the center so their energy can be used to live their best life. I asked Stephen if there was anybody that he would be, would like to be as facilitator that we should ask, and his first choice was Verna. And she was such a great choice. Stephen and I would sit down and say, okay, what are your big goals this year? And just kind of brainstorm. What are your dreams that might happen eventually? And then you start working back. Okay, so if those are your dreams, what ha has to happen within the next five years to do that? Then what has to happen within the next two years and a year and three months? One of his big dreams was to own the Saskatchewan Rough Riders because he's a big football fan. I mean, all of us thought, yeah, all right, well, it's a community football team, so that isn't going to happen. But at, then at one point, they have a share purchase program, and Dale bought Stephen a share in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, so he became an owner. You just never know how, how dreams are going to end up being reality. And one year, he wanted to go to Ottawa. We actually had a subcommittee of the network that planned the trip to Ottawa. We looked at how's he going to get there, plane, train, bus, and none of that worked. So then if he's driving, we had to find where to stop along the way and book it ahead of time and know that they had the services that he needed. We had to connect with the Ottawa senators, and the senators were awesome. They gave him tickets free in the box. As Stephen's mother, I was so pleased everything was coming together. Verna really understood his aspirations. I mean, it was just like one miracle after the other, all because of the network and everything that they did. And Verna and the network arranged so many things for Stephen. I can't thank them enough. And sometimes it was little things. Stephen's birthday was really important to him. I love looking at this photo album of my son's birthdays. All his attendants, they weren't even working with him anymore, but they came for the party. Every year he had a steak night at a restaurant, sold tickets, had silent auction, and all the money he raised went to Tell a Miracle. But Stephen was the decision maker. 
what we did was what he agreed to or wanted to do. His parents were allowed to be parents rather than caregivers. For me, it was that Stephen had a life. I went back and got my master's. Without Vern and the network, none of this could be possible. Realm started because Donalda saw how beneficial this network was for Stephen, and she wanted this to be available to everybody who has high physical disabilities. She just had this vision that she could do something that would help all kinds of people. She brought groups of people together to bounce this idea off of people about what she wanted to do. And it was her vision. I was just there to document and make it happen. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. My name is Justin Rayner. I grew up as a, a pretty active kid. I played a lot of sports growing up, but hockey was really my main passion. Yeah, when I was 13, we were uh, on a road trip to uh, Hodgeville. Up two to one, I think, in the, in the second period, and um, I ended up getting a breakaway and uh, kind of lost my balance, lost an edge, and went into the boards head first. I've been paralyzed since then for going on 17 years. I had a neurosurgeon tell me your hockey career is kind of over. At that time, I kind of felt like my entire life was over. Becoming paralyzed and going from a really good athlete that was always picked first in gym class for things and to going to a body that I, ca I can't do anything with was really, really tough on my uh, self-confidence and, and self-image. I was in a really, really dark place for two to three years where I just wanted to die all the time. And I didn't feel confident in my own being. I didn't feel confident being in a wheelchair. I wouldn't go out to eat with my family. I felt judged all the time. It was a really tough few, first few years to transition to life in a wheelchair. Being in rehab at Wascana allowed me the privilege to meet a lot of people that were either involved in, in the disability community, which is where I met Tanelda. Her son had, had was living there in the long-term facility. She's a very motivating and accepting person and she um, is very big in, into like not settling for anything and just go after what you want and your life can be amazing. I joined Realm because I need to get something happening in my life, something needs to change. And that's when I opened up and, and that's a really big part of being a center. You gotta be open and honest about what you want and asking for help. And you gotta be comfortable with all that and letting people into your life. My goals were really to get graduated from high school, possibly go to college or to find employment, which were huge insurmountable goals at the time in my mind. Um, I really didn't know where to start. I was lucky I surrounded myself with a lot of older people. They had been through lots of life stuff that I had never experienced and uh, were able to guide me through that transition from like teenage years to early 20s, which was a really difficult time for me because I was kind of lost at sea. I actually accomplished all the goals. I ended up graduating high school, ended up getting a certificate in web design, web development. I wanted to pursue a goal of getting back into hockey and uh, ended up accomplishing that by getting hired in the WHL as a scout. I used skills that my network had taught me before, how to build a resume, how to conduct an interview. My name is Jackie Sievertson. I've been in a wheelchair since December 31st, 2016. I've lived here in Regina since 1986. I've got three children and seven grandsons and one granddaughter. Before the MS stopped me, I sold rainbow vacuums for 11 and a half years. The most difficult part I had about all of this was not having my own independence. I knew about Realm Foundation because my one girlfriend, Verna Mang, actually asked me if I would be part of her support network. So then I knew that that's something I was going to need. I met Jackie 
at the swimming pool at the Y in an MS aquasize class. And she is this bubbly person whose faith is very important to her. Her MS has gotten worse. She had cancer and beat that. She ended up with people volunteering or doing things at cost to completely renovate her kitchen. And she cooks for people a lot. So I'm on the uh, advisory committee for Realm Foundation. We ended up meeting Jackie through that. She applied to become a member of Realm. We interviewed her and she's just a lovely personality. The network has really helped me in lots of ways. They said, what is your main goal? And I said, to learn to stand and walk again. When I heard about First Steps, I thought, I need to try it. And I love it here. First Steps Wellness Center has therapists that are specialized to work with individuals with high physical disabilities. So the network wanted to help her continue her progress. They found out that I had actually borrowed money, added money onto my mortgage to be able to go to First Steps to begin with. They said, we need to do fundraising. I had two friends in from Lanigan. One of them said, you're such a good cook and baker, make a cookbook and sell it. I went through my recipes. They did all the typing for me and we found out where was the best place to get it published. And I called it Jackie's Joy of Cooking. And it has been the best fundraiser we've done. Without the help of the network though, I couldn't have even thought about it. I wouldn't be able to go to First Steps. I wouldn't be able to work on my goal of being able to stand and walk again. Some days I can stand way better than others. The longest I've stood is six and a half minutes. It's working, it's helping. My network, I knew they were behind me. They had my back, you know, I, I knew that I wasn't on my own in these kind of things. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. My name is Amanda Mies. I was originally born from Montreal, Quebec. I work and I go to school full time. Uh, given that I had older siblings, my mom used to say that I wasn't developing 100% and she'd argue with the, t the doctors and say she's not developing the same way as my two older ones what's going on and then that's when cerebral palsy came into play. Amanda reminds me of my son Stephen. She is so young and adventurous. Amanda actually originally applied for the job of facilitator and then when she started working with one of our other centers she quickly realized that say hey I don't want this job I want my own network. I think it was a little bit nerve-wracking but I knew I needed to do it because Given that my family is so far away, yeah. I needed those supports and I knew I could support myself, but I needed a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's where the network comes in. Through the network, um, she definitely wanted to keep her relationship with her partner separate from the network so he doesn't sit on the network. She wanted to finish up her schooling and that's still just, she's just at the end. We've been working very hard on getting my South Poly Tech Certificate finished. Oh, okay. And they've been coming up with some amazing ideas. I think it would have just been a longer and more stressful process. One of the network things the network really does is it relieves stress. It goes back to that saying of sometimes two heads are better than one. They seem very open-minded, which is nice. And I yeah. think that's, that's part of the problem is that there's a large amount of people that are not open-minded yeah. about it yet. Yeah. So let's pave the way and get it done and well, see, that's become why. the advocate for everybody. She wanted to have help with papaya because papaya is a big dog and, and how do you get dog food and how do you get papaya to the vet and she doesn't drive so transportation issues. Anything that she needed she would bring to the network. She is a very good speaker and very bright so we've used her a few times to speak as a Realm ambassador. And it doesn't matter the center's life. I think everybody needs a network. Let's well, get you on know it. What? It's so. funny. 
Jackie is another ambassador for Realm, and her faith is such an inspiration. Everyone that is in, in any kind of compromised position, a network works absolutely fantastic. And I would recommend it for every single adult that is handicapped in any way. They allow an opportunity for you to really self-direct your life by building up a solid network from the ground up. And um, it can really allow you to be successful and, and drive your own bus, so to speak, and allows you to become independent and, and social and confident. I don't think I would have been where I'm at today without my network. They helped me during a time in my life when I was kind of lost and uh, not sure where I wanted to go in life. They kind of helped steer the ship while I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. I definitely don't think I'd be successful in life without, without having my network around to help me out. Stephen died June 21st, 2016. He was 31 years old. This young man at 31, he had a full life. And the very last comment I made when I was speaking at Stephen's memorial was, and I will share Stephen's, the lessons that Stephen taught me with anyone who will listen. And here I am just continuing on that journey because I know it works. Networks work. That's what I know. People being there for other people absolutely works. Inclusion works. Producers Lori Kuffner, Judith Silverthorne. Director Lori Kuffner. Writers Lori Kuffner, Judith Silverthorne. Researcher Lori Kuffner. Director of Photography Tony Quinones. Production Coordinator Judith Silverthorne. Production Assistant Judith Silverthorne. Editor Sound Mix Trevor Aikman. Still Photography Judith Silverthorne, Linda McDowell. Special thanks First Steps Wellness Center, Taylor Halverson, Brittany Hoff, Andy Schmidt, Realm Foundation, Regina Leader Post, The Ottawa Senators. Narrator Jim Van Horn. Integrated Describe Video Specialist Simone. Cupid. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Content Development Specialist, Jim Crisco. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Kara Nye. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Cooper Rock Pictures, Inc. Silverlight Productions, Inc. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.